Well, good morning, everybody. It is Ian. I am the lead pastor here at River Valley, and thank you so much for taking a little time to join me on Sabbath Sunday. And now Sabbath Sunday is the last Sunday of 2021, and we take this day intentionally not to forego church, but to move church into our homes with our families so that we might have a, an intentional day of Sabbath, which that word itself is an Old Testament word that means rest. And God has created us for rhythms of work and rest. So this day intentionally is meant to spend, is be spent with our families um, praying, worshiping, getting into God's word, and seeing how God might help us rest both physically and spiritually before we get into a new year of ministry in 2022. I wanted to encourage everybody at the end of this video, please uh, be intentional with this day of rest and maybe uh, consider turning off the devices for the rest of the day uh, and trying to eliminate all distractions so that we can hear God and be present with our family in these moments. I did want to say thank you to all of our volunteers um, in every area um, that you have invested your time, your talents, and treasures. Our leaders, um, uh, lay leaders, our elders, our stewards, and even our staff that have, have just given so much of their time, talent, and treasure to help advance the mission we feel that God's called us on to uh, help people take their next step with Jesus. We believe that people are doing that, and over this next year, as we get into 2022, God is going to continue to bring those fruits forward that uh, um, your investment has been so crucial and key to. So again, thank you to our staff, our uh, Stefan, uh, to Emily and AJ and Jen. Thank you so much for all that you have put in this year. I think our congregation would, would resoundingly say thank you as well for, for what you have done. And so on behalf of our elders and, and our lay leaders, thank you so much for, for what you do. Uh, we're so glad that uh, you're part of our team. Now, if you have the scripture in front of you, you might open up to 1 Kings. I wanted to share from uh, some of my favorite scripture in the Old Testament, my favorite prophet, Elijah. Now, Elijah was a prophet that had a unique trajectory. His life was uh, really focused in on what God called him to. He was so faithful along the way that at the end of his life, God just took him to heaven. He didn't die a regular death like the rest of us do, but uh, God just pulled him up um, because of his faithfulness and his, his tenacity to follow God in his ministry that what he was being called to. And in 1 Kings chapter 17, uh, we see the call of Elijah and him jumping right into ministry and going toe to toe with people that had kind of turned away from the things of God um, and begin to worship other gods. And this in particular God that they were worshiping was named Baal. So Elijah challenges them to a time of, of kind of a showdown between who is the real God. And so they build these altars and the Baal worshipers uh, dance and pray and cut themselves trying to get their God to burn up the, the sacrifice. And Elijah kind of mocks them and says, here, just drench mine. I'll show you whose God is the greatest God. And of course, uh, Yahweh, the one true God, burns up that sacrifice on that altar and shows himself the most powerful and, and one true God. And all the Baal worshipers at that moment realize that they have turned away from uh, the covenant that they had with God. And, and, and Elijah and his cohorts in that moment slaughter them. Um, the Old Testament uh, is much different than the New Testament in how we see sin has to be dealt with aggressively, um, that sin is not taken lightly. So in that moment when they had uh, taken those people's lives, the word got back to the king and uh, they started to chase Elijah for what he had done. And so we find ourselves at chapter 19 where I actually want to share some scripture with you at verse 4 where Elijah is now on the run. He's been faithful to the call that God has put him on, but he's, he's feeling this, this um, just overwhelming sense of, of depression and hurt. And uh, we see in these scriptures how God uses a moment of rest to restore and prepare Elijah for his future ministry. If you read with me at verse 4, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, 
and came and sat down under a broom tree. And, as, and, he, and he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord, take my life away. So again, he, he was um, saying, This is enough. I, I've done what you said, God. I'm done. I'm done with ministry. And maybe some of you who have had a long year, you're saying, Man, I, this has just been too much for me. You might be in the same place that Elijah was. For I am no better than my father's. And he lay down. And he fell asleep under the broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him. And he said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there at his head, a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. Wow, a a real gourmet meal. God, in this intentional moment of Elijah getting away into the wilderness for a day and kind of lamenting his hurts or his frustrations before the Lord. God says, here, have a meal. Let me give you what you need. Let, let's, let, let me feed you. And I think this is, this is for us to take away as we intentionally pull away to rest, that God wants to feed us, not only physically feed us, but spiritually feed us in this moment of rest. And then he ate and drank and he lay down again. At verse 7 it says, And the angel of the Lord came again a second time, and he touched him, and he said, Arise and eat, for the journey is great for you. So he's telling him, We're getting ready to send you into another season of ministry, just like we find ourselves today at the end of 2021, the end of our season of ministry, getting ready to go into a new season of ministry in 2022. And he says this at verse 8. The angel said, He arose and he ate and drank and he went in the strength of the food for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mount of God. So the, the angel came, come, comes a second time, lays this food in front of him. And this set of food is food that was going to last him to sustain him into the future ministry. That is my prayer for you today. That this intentional Sabbath Sunday is a Sunday that will sustain you into the new year of 2022. We believe that um, being uh, uh, in this moment is an important moment for you and your family. So please do not allow it to slip away, but use it uh, so that God can feed into you everything that you will need for this coming year. And certainly there are trials ahead. There are things that that you're apprehensive about. You're wondering if 2022 is going to be just like 2020 and 2021 was with with COVID and all the turmoil, all the turmoil in this world. But listen, we serve the one true God and that we can trust. He says that he never leaves and he never forsakes us and that we can trust that he will follow and walk with us through all the things that lie ahead. And he's going to give you exactly what you need in the midst of that. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of your time today to join me in in pondering what it means to to rest in the Lord and and how God can provide for us in this moment. Be blessed in the moments, in the sweet moments with your family. Today, may, may the voice of the Lord be clearer than you've heard Him in a long time through your faithfulness to rest in Him. We love you. We look forward to seeing you again on January 2nd. Have a great Sabbath Sunday.